This presentation is an introduction to the Math 195P Math Bridge Pre-Semester course for Fall 2015. In this presentation, we will give you an introduction to the instructors, to the Alex program that you'll be using throughout this course, the study skills assignments, and how to complete the course. Your instructors for this course for fall 2015 are Latrice Bowman. She is a DMS faculty member. Her office is located in Chapman 301E and her email is given here. Um, Latrice will be running the in-class sections of the Math Bridge course and will be available to students to answer questions and seek additional information. Kit Angeli is the Math Bridge assistant and she will be working with students through the distance sections of the Math Bridge course. Her office is located in Eielson 302 and her email is given here. In both cases, whether you're an in-class student or a distance student, you should feel free to contact either of the instructors for this course if you have any questions or any concerns about how you're doing or what needs to be done. Alex and Study Skills Alex is used to help students recall and retain prerequisite knowledge to be successful in core math courses. The study skill assignments are used to help students understand and utilize the necessary habits and procedures that are necessary to be successful in college courses. So let's talk a little bit about what Alex is and how you are going to be expected to use it. So in this course, you're going to start by taking an initial assessment. And this assessment is basically going to tell what um, information and skills you already have as it pertains to mathematics. Um, there's going to be a daily time requirement, as mentioned in the syllabus, that you'll be expected to read. And the main portion of Alex is the objectives and the pie chart. There are also Alex resources, which is where you will find your study skills assignments. And then there is the final assessment, which is the last portion of Alex that you're going to be expected to complete for this course. So for the initial assessment, before you can begin, you're going to need to log in and set up your account. Okay. For students who have done Alex before, you're still going to need to go through this step, which is go to the Alex website and click on Sign Up Now under the login information. And then in the Using Alex with a class, you're going to enter the course code. This course code can be found in the documentation given in with your syllabus. Once you have entered that information, you'll be asked to verify the class that you're registering for. Now, in this case, we've got the Pre-Calc for Business Distance listed, but again, it depends on which one you're registered for. Make sure that information matches up with your course. If it does not, please contact your instructor. Okay. Once you've verified your course, then you're going to click on how you are going to log in. If you've used Alex before, then you're going to use the Alex login name. If you have not, you're going to select the first option. Again, that second option is for students who've used Alex within a course setting, not just the placement setting. Once you have logged in, you're then going to be asked to fill in your student information. 
At that point, you're going to be taken through a tutorial that will walk you through how to enter answers into Alex and how to move from one step to the next. Okay. Once you've completed the Alex tutorial, you will be taken right into the initial assessment. Do your best. If you don't know something, there is a button that says I don't know and you can click on this but you should try each problem to the best of your ability Okay, you can use paper and pencil and it is strongly encouraged that you use paper and pencil to work through your problems and be able to check your work Okay, no other materials are required allowed that are not provided in Alex there are some problems that you may need to use a calculator um, you are only allowed to do so if the Alex calculator is available and you should only use the calculator provided in Alex. Okay. If you are stuck on something or you think you remember something but can't quite figure it out, um, give it your best shot and then move on to the next problem. In this initial assessment you're going to see about 25 to 30 problems. So obviously it's not going to cover everything in the prerequisite material. It, it, there's going to be some knowledge that you know right, straight away. And then there are going to be some pieces that you're not as familiar with. After you have completed the assessment, you're going to look at the pie chart that you're given and write down the information that they give you. Okay. This tells you how many topics you've completed out of the total number and it'll give you a percentage. Okay? You want to plan out the number of topics you're going to need to complete each day to reach your goal. And what this means is if for example I have 45 percent of my pie left to complete and I've only got nine days to do it I probably want to complete about five percent per day. Okay? So you can either do it with percentage or the actual topic numbers. Okay. And then last, you just want to begin working on your objectives. So here's an example of the pie chart that you're going to see as soon as you complete your assessment. Okay. And so you'll see the big number 63 in the middle there. And over to the right, you'll see that you've mastered 63 out of 288 topics. This is 22% of the topics in the class. Okay. Now again, depending on which course you're in, the total number of topics may be different. Obviously, the pre-calc class is going to have less topics than the calculus classes. Okay. Um, the number remaining that you're going to have to complete is going to be the difference there. So you can see the 225 in that little bar is how many topics you have left to complete. And then each of the colors and the dots below that show the different sections and how many topics in each section that you need to complete. Okay. The objectives are each of those different sections that you saw in the last slide. Um, to pass you need to have completed at least 90 percent in each objective in order to receive a passing grade. Okay, So that means if I have 30 topics in my pie slice then I need to have completed at least 27 of the 30 in order to pass. So how do you add topics to your pie? Well, in order to add a topic to your pie, basically, you're going to click on one of the pie pieces in the chart. And what's going to happen is it's going to come up with some um, topics that you can work on. You can pick which sections you work on, and you can pick which topics to work on. There's no particular order. Some of them, as I've said before, you may know right away. Others you may need to spend a little bit more time working on. OK, 
can you lose topics from your pie chart? The answer here is yes. Okay. As you are working through your pie chart, you will get periodic assessments to see if you still retain the information or if there are some pieces that you can add because you, you know, you've known it and it moves you through the section a little quicker. If on one of those assessments you get a problem wrong, then it's going to be removed from your pie chart and it's going to be put into the topics you still need to learn. How hard is it to reach the 90%? Well, it depends on a couple of things. First and foremost, it depends on what your initial assessment score is. The lo lower your score, the more topics you're going to have to work through to get to your 90%. At the same time, as you are working, if you have had the prerequisite information at some point before and knew that information, as you are working through the topics, that information is going to come back to you quicker than you might think. Okay, um, But it is something that is not going to happen overnight. You are going to have to work for it and you're going to have to plan for it. So again, an example here is um, in your pie chart view, it'll tell you when you click on a particular section what you've mastered, what you've learned since the last time you've logged in, and how, much, how many topics you have remaining. You'll also notice on this page up at the top there's a little timeline, and that will just give you an idea of when things are due um, and how far along you have progressed since the beginning. Okay. In some categories, you may not be ready for any of the topics. So in this case, you'll see I've picked kind of the light blue section there, and it says I haven't mastered anything yet, but at the same time I have 24 topics remaining. But um, there's not really anything for me to click on. And this just means that I'm not quite ready for this yet. Alex is a learning assessment system, so what that means is it will let you know when you're ready to tackle some topics based on the topics you've already completed. And so you may have to move around your pie chart to complete it. And so it's not going to be what we'd consider linear. It's not going to be one problem after another just to get things done. You're going to have to bounce from one section to another in order to complete all of the pieces. And in some cases, you may need to complete 100% of a section to move on to another section. Okay. Once you have completed all of your ALEPS objectives, you are then going to be asked to complete a final assessment. In order to pass this class, students must complete at least 80% on their final assessment. You will be given two attempts to do this. Okay? So the first will be the last day of class, and then if you find that your score is not good enough or it's not something you are happy with, you have a second attempt at the assi assessment. The second attempt will be scheduled. Both of them you will need to contact an instructor before you are able to take the final assessment. Final assessment should be proctored. Okay, if you have questions or concerns about this, please contact your instructor. Just like the initial assessments, you will not be allowed to use calculators or notes. Again, the calculator in Alex will pop up if you're allowed to use it, um, but you should not use any outside resources. And it is encouraged that you complete the Alex objectives prior to taking the final assessment. I put the word must here because some students have attempted final assessments without completing their objectives. Um, and it's just more beneficial to you if you've done that before you get to the end. Um, 
everything that you're going to see in the final assessment is going to be within your ALEC objectives. For the study skills assignments, to get access to these, they will be in your resources in Alex. So you will go to the menu in Alex, which is the bars, the three lines to the top left of the screen. Click on that and go to Instructor Resources. Under that you will find two folders. One of them is labeled Study Skills and inside of there you will find all of your study skills assignments. In most cases you will need to print these out in order to complete the assignment. All of the study skills assignments are due by August 27th. It is encouraged that you do them one day at a time and turn them in the next day. However, um, it is okay if you think about the ideas in the assignments do them all at once and turn them in. It is up to you as long as you turn them in by the 27th. In order to pass the class, you must complete at least six of the seven assignments. To receive a passing grade in order to complete this course and to move on to the core course that you're trying to take in the fall, you must log in 10 of the 12 days of the session. Um, session runs Monday through um, the Friday of each week. We are including the Saturday and Sunday in between the two weeks. You must complete three hours per day the first 10 days of the course. That's August 18th through the 27th. Students must actively participate by communicating with faculty. For distance students, this means that when we email you or set up sessions to talk with you, um, that you actually respond. Um, so you should be checking your email daily. For students in class, this means you participate in the discussions that happen in the classroom. Okay. You must complete your Alex Pi to 90%, and again, that's for each section. You must complete your final assessment to 80%, and again, you get two attempts at this. One of them has to be at least 80%, and last, you must complete all of your study skills assignments. At this time, if you have any questions, please contact either Latrice Bowman or Kit Angeli and we can make sure that you understand what's going on and you're prepared to do well in this class.